Okay, so I'll just talk about some special topics of linear algebra uh, is quotient space and dual space in the rank of a matrix. So first we're going to define what is a quotient space. So, so suppose V is a vector and we have a subspace, then the set V plus U is defined like this. So the set of all V plus the U from the big U, all right? <laughs> and a fine subset of V is a, some set of the form like this for some sub subspace u and v <laughs> and uh the fine subset like this is said to be parallel to u <laughs> and now we're going to define what is a quotient space so quotient space is basically set of all such like this so set of all v plus u where v s and v okay so yeah it's just set of all this and each of this is defined to be like this. So this basically, basically is a collection of sets, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna look at some examples. <laughs> so if u is x to x, so if u is like x to x, this is u, and r square u is basically all the sets like this. All the, all these are, are in R square divided by U. And yeah, <laughs> if, if, if U is a plane containing the origin, then this is basically set of all planes in the uh, three dimensional space parallel to the, to the plane U. Okay, now we're gonna define some um, properties. <laughs> so, these following are equivalent. I'm going to prove them first. Proof. So A to B is, okay. So A to B is V plus U is equal to, we know that W plus V minus W plus U, right? And this is basically um, this is in U. U is a subspace. So this whole thing. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Give me one sec. This whole thing is in U. So this entire thing is in U. So this is in W plus u okay <laughs> so which means that so this means that v plus u is a subset of w plus u and if we interchange u then we're done if we no, no, no. if we interchange if we just interchange v and w we get like and then we get the result and b implies c So, if they're equal, then the intersection is not empty. This is trivial. Trivial. And C implies A. So, C implies A. So, suppose we have, so if it is not empty, right? Then we just pick an element that's in an intersection. So, if we have V plus U1 is equal to w plus u2 then we have v minus w is equal to u2 minus u1 isn't w isn't u done okay <laughs> now we can define the addition and scalar multiplication on the quotient space so we define their sum to be this set and the scalar multiplication is this set and and we're going to show that with these definition being defined this is a vector space with the multiplication and addition defined above of. but before we prove it's a vector space we have to show that the definition is well defined so so basically if v plus u 
second is equal to v plus u w plus u is equal to w plus u then um, v plus w plus u should be equal to v plus w plus so if this is true then the definition should be well defined and now we're going to show this so first from above we know that this means that v minus v is in u also w minus w is in u right so we have v minus v plus w minus w is in u right which means that which means that v plus w minus v plus w is in u and this means that v plus w plus u <coughs> v plus w plus u so it is well defined right for scalar multiplication so we have lambda of v minus v is in u then uh, we know that lambda v minus lambda of v uh, this is in u so we have lambda v plus u equal to lambda plus u and we're done to show us a vector space show it's show that v u is a vector space uh simple why is this so simple because if these are well defined right then when they're adding we just we, we only check like the the first part of the addition and the u we just like ignore it when we're checking if it's a vector space but because if this plus this is basically this it's very easy to check as a vector space because we just check the like the first part right and we know that oh then we know that yeah it's a it's a vector space and we're done okay there's a vector space and then now we're going to define a quotient map <laughs> it's a linear map defined by this and we have to then we have some interesting result <sighs> and the proof is basically oh this result means that the quotient space the dimension of quotient space is the difference of the dimensions of the two spaces this looks very very uh, beautiful right it's a beautiful result so now we first define pi to be the quotient map pi is the quotient map then we know that the null of this is u, right? Why? Because pi of u, because for u and u, pi of u is basically u plus u. It's basically just u, which is 0 plus u by definition, right? And the range of pi is v quotient u, right? This is like the range. So by the fundamental theorem of, I don't know, the dimensional linear, I, don't, I forgot the name, but it's a very fundamental e uh, equality. This dimension of mu of pi minus dimension of range of pi. Right. No. Plus range. Sorry. Plus range. And because pi is a linear map, right? It's a linear map from V. So we have this equality. So we have if we move this to here, then we have dimension of V U 
dimension no nah. okay dimension v minus dimension u and we're done okay <laughs> okay and we're done with quotient space and we're going to do some discuss discussion about like the dual map and dual space so we're going to define what's a linear functional linear function is basically a linear map from v to the, to the field to a field and the dual space is basically a set of all linear functionals on v and the good thing is that the dual space and the vector space itself have the same dimension <laughs> and the proof is because since we have this result so the set of all linear maps set of all linear function on v is isomorphic to f of dimension v dimension f so <laughs> we have dimension of this is basically equal to dimension v this is by definition right and this the dimension of this is the dimension of this right having the same dimension if they're isomorphic of course they have the same dimension and this is equal to dimension v times dimension f and dimension f has dimension one so they're equal <laughs> and so recall 3.5 linear mass basis domain so if, if this is a basis and we, have, uh, we just pick random and elements from w then there's a unique linear map such that this is true so they agree so they agree uh, like this so <laughs> so with that being definition we just look at the definition of dual basis so if you have basis of v and a dual basis is the list of uh, linear functionals such that <laughs> so look at this definition this means that oh phi of j of v of j is equal to one else zero right <laughs> yeah and so basically the w1 and wn are just like you know it's just like one and zeros playing around <laughs> so we define a linear map like this so basically um each phi j sorry 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 each each phi j so we have v1 vn and one zero 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 so just phi of vj equals to one phi j of vj and phi j of v like k where k is not equal to j is defined to be zero like so with 3.5 we see that this these linear maps are well defined and it is indeed <coughs> a linear map and well i'm going to show that the dual base is the basis of the dual space which means that the terminology dual basis is verified is justified so we're gonna prove this <laughs> so first we let v1 vn be a basis of v and we let phi1 phi n be like the dual basis <laughs> okay <laughs> and we have to show that it's a basis of the dual space all right so first we're going to show that um it's linear independent show that it's linear independent so suppose suppose we have a1 phi1 a n phi n is equal to zero right and now we have a1 phi 1 a n phi n of v j is equal to a j right a joy for one j n <laughs> this is equal to zero because this is a zero map right zero map right now we have this zero which means that 
I won, Phi M is linearly independent. Now, as we know this is true, this is a linear independent set of vectors, and this with length n, right? So, we're done. <laughs> okay, let's delete this page. Okay, <laughs> now we're going to define what is a dual map. This is a bit complicated, alright? So, dual map of V. V is a linear, uh, linear map from V to W, and the dual map of V is the linear map from the dual space of W to dual space of V, which is a dual map. And the definition is like, the phi is a linear function of, on W, right? And this is equal to the composition of phi of T. <laughs> okay, so. Why is this a linear function on V? Because, um, because phi of t, um, say t of phi, right? Is this a linear functional? If we, this is a function, right? Um, t of phi t of phi of is equal to phi of t <laughs> it's a function itself so it might look a bit weird so this of v is equal to phi of t of v right <laughs> is equal to phi of tv so the input is v is v the input v is in v and tv is in w right and this is a linear function on w so this is in the field so the input is v the output is in the field so this is indeed a linear functional <laughs> right T of phi is a linear functional because, yeah, on V. Okay, so now we have some properties. So the first two bullet points in the result imply that the function takes T to T prime as a linear map from this to this. <laughs> so S plus T, the dual map is equal to the dual map of S plus the dual map of T. And lambda and whatever and I oh, will just prove this let's just prove this like these results st okay so let's prove this so <laughs> s plus t of phi is equal to phi of s plus t right then we know that this is phi of s plus phi of t which is phi plus phi, okay. And similarly, lambda s, phi, phi of lambda s, which is equal to lambda times phi of s, which is equal to lambda times s of phi. And the third one is S of T lambda is equal to uh, of phi is phi of S of T, right? Which is phi of S of T, which is T phi of S, which is T of uh, T of this which is T S phi. We're done. 
now we're going to define a new stuff. It's called annihilator. So the annihilator of a set U is defined by this. So, so this consists of sets of all linear functional on V such that it vanishes on U. It vanishes on U. So, and we're going to show that the annihilator is a subspace of a linear functional. <laughs> and so, to show us a subspace, only we need to show that is, the only thing to show is that 0 is in this, and u is closed under addition and scalar multiplication. Then we know that's the only thing we have to show, right? So for this, it's easy to show because um, the zero map vanishes on v, so it vanishes on u, right? So this, this is easy. And um, so, so let's phi and psi, it's an ugly psi. A phi and psi, annihilator, the phi plus psi of u is equal to phi of u plus f. Psi u. 0 plus 0 is again 0. Right? And for lambda, it's like lambda times 0 is 0 again. So, so it's subspace. <laughs> and now we're going to prove another result is that something with dimensions. So if u is a subspace of v, the dimension of u plus the dimension of annihilator is the dimension of v. Alright? So, first, to prove this, we let u1, um, be a basis of u. And you extend this to a basis, basis of v all right and then we let phi 1 phi m phi n be a basis basis of the dual space okay all right so we claim we claim that claim that phi m until nah plus one phi n is the basis of a nihilator so first the first thing we have to show that is this is equal to the spam of phi m plus one phi n right so let me just copy this first so to show that this direction we know that if phi is in the span then phi is equal to a of phi m plus 1 a n phi n right then we know that oh if for u is in u right then u is equal to a1 u1 a m u m right then phi of u is equal to this thing 
this thing of u, right? <laughs> and you substitute this into u, and you calculate, you see that this is equal to zero, right? <laughs> so we know that it's an annihilator. <laughs> now, for this direction, so if we have we have phi is a nuclear, then we know that first we know that it's a linear functional, right? It's linear functional because we show that this is a subspace, right? First it should be in this and if it's in V, then we express as like a1 phi 1 a n phi n right <laughs> then we know that it's a nuclear right so phi of u1 is 0 and we know that it's a1 is 0 and we repeat this process we're gonna see that phi of u m so so we know that phi is equal to a n plus 1 So we know that phi is the is in the span, right? It's in the span. All right, we have shown this is true, and now we have to show that. We have to show that. Secondly, we have to show that it's linearly independent, right? Linearly independent. So, if we have scalars such that. Plus one a n phi n is zero. There would be zero. Then this of u m plus one. is zero, right? Because it's a zero map. But this, the whole thing, will turn out to be equal to a n plus one, right? And then repeat this process, go blah, 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 equal to zero equals to a n, right? So it's learning independence. <laughs> now, We know that, also we know that phi 1 till phi m is basis of u, the dual space of u, right? <laughs> so we know that dimension of, dimension of, and now, we are good, right? Why is this? Because, because like here, right? The dimension you added, add up their dimensions. This is like, this is like simple, right? <laughs> okay. Oof, it's a long proof. So, if you keep going, we're almost there. <laughs> I suppose V and W finite dimensional and you have a T as a linear map. Then, then, Null. The null is the the null of the dual map is the annihilator of range of this. So, ah, ah. So basically, so if phi is the null, right? Then we know that T of phi is a zero map. Phi of T. Right. So zero is phi of T of V. It's equal to phi of T V for any V and V. 
right? And all the TV is in range of T. So phi is an annihilator, right? So phi is in range of T, annihilator. <laughs> now, for this direction, phi is an annihilator, then we know that phi of TV is zero, phi of V, right? Which means that phi of t is a zero map. Which means that t prime of phi is a zero map. Which means that phi is in the null of this. Right? And now I prove part b. <laughs> What's part b? So, null of this is the null of t. Okay, this is just like a fancy thing. So, null of t is equal to null of t plus dimension of w minus dimension of v. Okay, so this null of t is equal to dimension of what? Range of t, right? Because, or I show this, right? equal to dimension of w minus dimension of range of t. This is from above. This is from from this, right? No. And equal to dimension v minus dimension of no of t. This is the fundamental theorem, right? This is the fundamental theorem. And which is equal to dimension of We're done. <laughs> right? We're gonna discuss more properties. So T surjective equivalent to T prime injective. And equivalency, equivalency. So if T is surjective, this is equivalent to range of T is equal to W, right? Well, this is equivalent to the annihilator is zero, <laughs> right? Now we continue, we have the null of t prime is zero. Right, because they're equal to each other, right? And this means that injective equivalence, right? Easy to show. Well, I think I need to explain more on this, right? This is because this. So, range t, if you, sub, this is range t, and this is w, right? Then dimension of range t, is basically just dimension of w, because range t is equal to w. And this is annihilator, and this is w. So, the dimension of w plus something is the dimension of w. Well, then this should be equal to zero, right? Zero dimension means like just, just a zero vector. So the annihilator is just a zero vector, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Uh, then we're good.
we're good to go. And the range, some uh, properties of the range of T. So, mm, proof. A. The dimension of range T is equal to the dimension of range T, T prime. <laughs> we know that this is equal to dimension of w prime minus null t prime it's from the middle theorem right and well from this you can take off this and this is equal to the annihilator range of t right <laughs> well from this again, you see that this is equal to dimension of range of t, right? Now, for this one, we first show this inclusion first. I'm going to show this inclusion first, all right? So, if phi is in the range of t, prime, it's a linear functional on, uh, it's a linear functional on v, then we know that there exists a psi such that t of psi is equal to phi, right? Well, now, if we know that if v is from null of t, right? If v is from null of t, so we have to show that we want to show that this is the annihilator, right? So we just pick a v of no t, and we hope we want this as zero, right? <laughs> well, which means that phi of v t prime of psi of v, which is equal to psi of t of v, which is equal to psi of TV <laughs> and because V is a null T so this is zero right we do phi of zero which is equal to zero because zero maps maps from zero to zero right <laughs> we all know this so phi is T Injective is equivalent to t prime surjective. Oh wait, we're not done yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I only proved the inclusion. I've only shown the uh, inclusion. But we, there's something more to say. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We only show the inclusion, but we have to show that they're equal to each other. But to show that they're equal to each other, I'll show that. Time dimension of range t prime is equal to the dimension of <laughs> no t the annihilator okay so we just show that this is a subset and they have the same dimension then they're equal to each other okay <laughs> well we know that the dimension of range of t is just the dimension of range of t, right? Well, it's just dimension of v minus null. Well, this again is a annihilator, right? And we're done. Okay, we're done with this. And now we have one last more and we're going to do something about matrix so one last thing is t injective t prime surjective t 
injective. T injective. This means that if and only if this is true, right? Well, if this is true, this happens if and only if mm, no t the annihilator is v prime, right? And this happens if and only if look at this range of t prime range of t prime range of t prime this precisely means that surjective right we're done okay now we're gonna do something about matrix <coughs> we're gonna we use our results from dual maps and then we're gonna ultimately we're gonna prove that the row rank and the column rank of a matrix are the same so the transpose this is a fact about transpose so a is a matrix c is a matrix then the transpose as their product is the product that their transposes <laughs> well this is a proof i just omitted because it's just direct computation all right just calculate it directly <laughs> But this is going to be important. 3.114, if T is the linear map, then the matrix of T prime is equal to the transpose of matrix of T. Well, this isn't uh, interesting, right? So, so first we just let A equal the matrix of T, and C is the matrix of T prime, <laughs> okay? So first, we know that t prime of psi j uh, uh, so, 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 so basically we did some basic settings so v1 vn and phi1 phi n w1 wm and psi one, psi, psi m. So basis, basis of v, w. Okay. Now, let's add more page. Uh, okay. Let's add more one one more page. So. First, we know that T prime of psi j, right, the matrix, is equal to C R j times phi of r, j from 1 to n, right, like something like this, right, and also, this is equal to what? Psi j of phi. Um, no. Of t. Right? <laughs> so, if this apply to the vector v, if this apply to the vector v, k, some v, k, then we're gonna see that um, psi j of t v k is equal to c k j, right? Because this vanishes other than just, it's only phi k, like produces one and one just skips this, right? Now we also have so have psi j of t v k is equal to psi j t v k and now we can express t v k as some a of r k w r right just basically like we know this 
and this is equal to right well it vanishes only at the, only at wj it won't vanish so a of r j no 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 jk 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 sorry j k right now we're gonna see that because they're equal to each other right so we have this is equal to this so we're done they're transposed with each other <laughs> as desired and we're almost there so we're gonna define the rank of the matrix it's basically the row rank it's the dimension of the span of the rows and the column rank is the dimension of the span of the columns okay <laughs> So, we're going to show this first. So, I have to show that the dimension range of T is equal to the column range. The, range, the dimension of range is the column rank. <laughs> so, first, if V1, Vn are basis of V, and W1 um, should be Wm, right? <laughs> Yes, it is basis of W, right? Okay, so now we show that. Okay, so we know that for for W is in the span of T of V one, T of V n. Such that. A function takes W to matrix of W. <laughs> well, so for a function that takes W from this to the matrix of this, so consider a linear map right, like this. <laughs> so so if w is equal to a1 tv1 a n t v n right then the matrix of w is basically <laughs> the matrix of a1 tv1 a n t v n and this is basically a1 times the matrix of TV1. AN times the matrix of TVN. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and W the maps to this. Right? <laughs> So this this thing is in the span of matrix TV1. Matrix of T V N. Okay. So for W and span of this takes to span of this. So well, this is a, a bijection, bijective linear map. This is a bijective linear map. <laughs> so we have w's from span this, and the function takes w to mw. <laughs> now, m of w is in the span of this, right? So this is a... Uh, clearly bijective right so for any for any element in this band so if if the so if you have two they're equal right so suppose is we have to show this injective right so if it's injective so if a1 blah 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 an is equal to um 
B1, Bm, right? Then we have A1 minus B1 <coughs> of M of T V1, blah, 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 is equal to zero, right? Uh, if that's equal to zero, then we show that a i is equal to b i. Right. <coughs> Some bijective, right? Because, well, clearly it's on to, but if like you have like w and v, they're different. Suppose like one of a i is different, right? <laughs> then these are all the same except for a i m t v i right <coughs> so it's injective it's bijective so so same dimension same dimension so this this have the same dimension but the dimension of this is the column rank of the matrix of t Right. <laughs> and also this is the range of T. This is the range of T, right? This is the range of T. And this is the column rank of matrix of T. <laughs> right. Okay, so now we're good. Yes. And we're going to show that the rank, column rank is equal to row rank. So they represent the same thing. So we define, define T from F of M1 to F of M1. <laughs> Such that T of x equals to a times x <laughs> okay and now we consider the standard basis standard basis and f m1 f m1 Then we know that the matrix of T is equal to A. You can show this on like just just uh with this and this and you do computation, you do calculation, you see that oh it turned out to be this is true. Now so which means that the column rank of A column rank of matrix of t which is the dimension of range of t which is the dimension of range of t prime which is the column rank of this which is the column rank of the transpose which is the column rank of transpose of A, which is the row rank of A, right? And we're done. And that's it for this learning algebra. Preparing the learning algebra, prepare from the analysis of manifold sections. We're going to learn more learning algebra later. This is just some little special topics that needs and uh, multilinear algebra. <laughs>